we want to learn about our first measure of dispersion, which is range. Now range is really simple because it's just the maximum minus the minimum and it has a symbol, which is R easy enough. Now, some books, some textbooks write it as in words. They'll say, you know, our data set goes from two to 19. Um, but ours and many other books will write it as a number 17. So our text uses that ladder, which is 17. All right, so we are going to look at two data sets side by side. There's an algebra exam and a stats exam. Isn't that nice? Now for both of these exams, we're actually going to find the mean and the range. I've actually found the mean for the algebra right here. You can see the mean is 74 and the range is 40. No problem. But now we're going to do it for the stats exam. As a matter of fact, if I use StatCrunch, I can find both at the same time, I believe. So let's go to StatCrunch. And if you're interested, I'll have this as um, well, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> MAT 133 3.2 ALG stats exam data. So if you just kind of look that up, you'll find it. You probably won't have to type all of it. All right, so I want to go to stat. And I want to go to summary statistics of columns. And I can select both the algebra and the stats column. So to do that, I held down the control key. So I clicked algebra and I clicked stats. And then I want to find the mean. And I'm going to scroll through and find the range. Oh, there it is hit my control, I'm holding down my control button and clicking range. So it'll find the mean and the range for me. Isn't that nice? So I click compute and there you have C. Algebra exam, just like I said, was 74 and 40. Oh, look at that. The statistics exam is also 74 and 40. <laughs> Interesting. Now in the calculator, if I want to do the same thing, I go to stat, edit, I clear out that old data that was the pet data actually and then I type in the stats exam and there they are and then I go to stat calculate one variable statistics L1 is where I put the stats exams I go down to calculate and press enter and there you can see the mean is 74 the range is the max minus min and the calculator does not find range the way StatCrunch does, but it does tell you the max is 100 and the min is 60. So you can do the calculation yourself from the calculator. So one way or another, either with StatCrunch or with the calculator, we know that this number is 74 and this number is 100 take away 60, which is 40, which so is this one. Interesting. All right, so let's label them on this data set below. So the range is the distance from the lowest data point all the way up to the highest data point. That's the range. So there's a distance of 40 there. The mean is the balance point. So the mean, uh, let me do it in green, the mean was at 74, which is right here. So that's where you would put your fulcrum or your teeter-totter, <laughs> right? So the, the center of your teeter-totter in order to get those two sides to balance. That's the mean for both of these data sets. Hmm. All right, so they all both have the same mean, they have the same range, but they're not the same classes. So if you look at the stats exam, that's a different class. Look at those dots. Then say the algebra exam. And by the way, these aren't real data. I mean, most of the time I'm trying for real data, but this particular time I am not because I'm trying to make a point here. I'm trying to exaggerate something that can happen in real life. All right, as a student, which would you have? Well, there's no one right answer for this it's kind of up to you. You know, if you're a conservative student, and I mean that small c conservative, this is not political. <laughs> this is more, um, you're not a risk taker. So if you're a conservative student, right, 
then you would probably rather take the algebra class because there's a lot of consistency in that class. So they would rather take algebra because there's a lot of consistency and a lot of passing, right? There's a lot of people passing right there. Right? Now, if you're a risk taker, if you're a gambler, then you're more likely to take the stats class because stats can have high rewards over here. So you take the statistics class because you have a good chance. I mean, here you only have one chance, um, one out of all of these to be a really high score. Whereas here you've got the 85, you've got the 90, you've got the 100, right? You've got the 76. So you have a better chance of a higher score. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, I'm not that person. Yeah. Well, you might not be, but if you're the type of person to buy scratch off tickets, you're more like this than you're willing to admit. Yeah. So um, a lot of students, you know, think, oh, I'll get into that class because I'll be the, you know, the one success. I'll be the high numbers. Right. And maybe you will. But there's also the risk of being one of those ones down there, which is not passing. And again, these were completely made up. <laughs> these are not real. All right. So what does this show us, this particular example? What was I shooting for here? The mean and the range were the same, right? So how useful are they for comparing these data sets? They're not useful at all, right? So how useful? Not useful at all because they were the same, right? The mean and the range were the same, but the data sets are not the same. Right, they definitely have different spread. And you can see it when you're thinking about being a student in one class or the other. You can tell, you know, oh, I'd rather be in this class or oh, I'd rather be in this class. There are reasons for that that shows that they're not the same, right? So we need a better measure of spread, right? These, these data set or these two data sets have a different um, spread to them and range was not cutting it, right? So these data sets have different spreads and we need a number that will show that to us. A more refined, let's put it that way, measure of spread that will find that for us. enter, that more refined measure of spread will be, well, it'll be standard deviation, but variance is on the way to that. They're, they're, they go hand in hand. So I'll just say and variance. Both of those are more refined measures of spread. There are different times when we want to use each of them, but they are very closely related to each other. So the variance and the standard deviation, both are that m more refined measure of spread, and they will be able to show us a spread for that data set that we're not able to get with just range. One of the cues with range is that it's really easy to find. I mean, it's max minus min. So that's extremely easy to find, which kind of a sign that's not that great of a measurement, um, which we actually can make a little note of up here. So the TI-84 does not find it, but it's really easy to find. StatCrunch does, StatCrunch does find it. Right, but it's very easy. A very easy formula is often a sign that it's not a very refined measurement. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it tells you, you know, the distance from the lowest to the max, but it's not, I guess not great is what I want to use. It's not a refined measure of spread. 
we need something that's a little bit more fine tuned than that. We want a fancier one and range is not fancy, which is good to some extent, but it's not going to, it's not going to cut it as we can see from this example, we need more. 